Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weezy Died Laughing and I'm here with my weekly wrap up. So I got four books read this week and I'm going to tell you all about them now. The first book I read was a thriller and it was called The Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda. A book about a disgraced journalist called Leah and basically something goes wrong with the story that she was writing and she ends up leaving um, the city of Boston to move to this kind of smaller rural town with one of her old friends that she recently reconnected with um, and she, after she's been there for a few months she has been she's working as a teacher um, and this girl is found very badly injured near her home and at the same time her roommate goes missing um, and as she kind of gets in touch with the police and finds that there's some connections between herself and the girl that has been injured um, and then she also kind of starts looking more into her roommate's background and kind of realises that even though she's known her for a very long time she actually knows very very little about her um, and things kind of start feeling a little bit fishy and she is obviously trying to get involved and get like figure out what is going on basically. It definitely kind of kept me on my toes because I wasn't really sure of what was exactly going to happen and um, so I did feel kind of invested in the story and invested in figuring out what had happened. Um, there were some bits that I didn't like that much. Um, I kind of felt like something she decided to keep secret from the police and kind of investigate on her own was a bit stupid at times. Um, I did really like the police in this as well. She has like kind of a little bit of a relationship with one of the um, detectives on the case and I really liked that. I thought like, I don't know, it was just, there's just something about it that I thought was just like really, it felt right for me. I felt like there was chemistry between them um, and it didn't like overtake the case. It didn't overtake the story. It was just kind of like this side thing that was kind of nice. Um, so I really, really did like that. There were some things about her being a journalist um, that I resonated with and other things that I felt a little bit like were a bit odd Um, because obviously I am a journalist so it is like to be working in that kind of field though obviously I do online media so mine is a little bit different than um, working for a physical paper the way she did. Um, and I did there were some questions thrown up for me in terms of how she was disgraced in the journalism world and how her editor and her paper, like everything kind of fell onto her. But yet her story, like there's just so much more about like it wasn't just all her, if you know what I mean. Like for myself as a journalist seeing it, I was a little bit like, but like she's getting the blame. But at the same time, there were so many other people that had to check stuff off before it would go into the public eye. Um, and they didn't seem to be getting any blame, it was just her. So there was just bits like that that I was a little bit like, hmm, about. Um, but there was one thing she said, I actually took a screenshot of it on my phone because it was on my Kindle. Um, and she was kind of talking about um, being a journalist and telling the story of something horrific. And basically about how you have to become really detached to the story and I really 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 felt that was so apt um for someone who does work like for myself I do work um on uh, stories about like you know terrorist attacks and for some really awful things that happen animal cruelty cases stuff like that that it's really hard to do um but at the same time it's our job to do it we have to tell those stories and sometimes you do have to take a step back and kind of just put a wall between you and the people in the story I guess. So I'll just read it out. Practice detachment early on when the shock of blood was too sharp, when I felt too deeply, when I saw a thousand other possibilities in the flat, slack face of a stranger. Now I couldn't shake it. It was one of my top skills. It was the only way to survive in real crime, the raw blood and bone, the psychology of violence. But too much, but too much emotion in an article and all a reader sees is you. You need to be invisible. You need to be the eyes and ears, the mechanism of the story. And as a journalist myself, I just thought that was really, really true. Um, so yeah, so overall I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5 stars. There were some bits I liked, some bits I didn't. I do have a written review down below that I will link. The second book um, I picked was for um, my Feminist Lit February slash February. And it was Molly and the Marsh by Anna Carey. And this is the sequel to um, The Making of Molly, which I read last year. But I think this is probably something you can also just pick up and read on your own if you wanted to. You don't necessarily have to um, read Myth Making of Molly. But this is basically about Molly. Molly and her friend Nora, the both of them are Irish suffragettes in 1912 Dublin um, and they were, they're 14 years old so they're not really allowed to do as much suffragette things as they would like to. They're kind of stopped by Molly's sister who doesn't want them getting too, in too much trouble but also doesn't want them getting her in trouble because she's also part of the movement but she's older so she can do a lot more things. Um, and in this one the British Prime Minister is um, coming over to visit Dublin so the girls kind of want to get involved with kind of some of the um, you know the votes for women flags and the votes for women kind of shouts and um, 
stuff like that uh, while he is there and they're trying to figure out how they can get involved with it and at the same time um, Nora's cousin Grace who also goes to school with them who is like insufferable and they really really don't like her um, comes to stay with Nora for a few weeks so they're kind of dealing with her being around all the time and having to deal with her um, and yeah there's just a lot of cuteness in this book and a lot of just I just really really liked it. I fell into the story a lot quicker than I did with the making of Molly. Um, all these all these stories are told in letters as well to Molly's pen pal um, who is a, a British girl and so she's telling basically this girl, her name is Frances, their stories through letters about all their daily events and stuff like that. Um, and I just thought Molly was so much fun. I really really liked it. There was something that kind of like niggled at me a little bit when I was reading that. that. It was only that considering she is living in Britain occupied Ireland in 1912. She's living in like a proper place of privilege um, considering the time. she, Her father and mother obviously are well off, they're quite wealthy, she's going to school, she's getting an education, she is you know writing pen pals to a girl in England which like would be like really you know you wouldn't like when I think of Irish people at that time I normally think of people who are you know really being kicked around by the system by the fact that Britain is controlling Ireland that we are trying to fight back and um, I'm kind of thinking of those people um, a lot I'm not really always thinking about people like Molly um, but like you know she does also recognize her privilege and that she talks to her um her maid Maggie and Maggie's kind of telling her about how like when they grow up and she reminds herself now and again that like you know she like just other people don't have the same opportunities as she does and you know she she does she I, I did like that she recognized it but this one overall was just so much fun I really really enjoyed it I actually picked this up to read um on the vote 100 day so like the actual 100 day of uh, women getting the vote um, in the UK and in Ireland I think I'm not sure if it was in, I think it was in Ireland um, and it's really funny because there was like something there was basically Irish women um, broke the windows of some parliament buildings um, and the granddaughter of one of the suffragettes um, reenacted it and that suffragette was like mentioned a couple of times in this book so that was just really interesting and the whole breaking of the windows was also mentioned at the very start of this book so it was just really really poignant for me to be reading it on that day um, and I just really enjoyed it so I gave this a really strong 4 out of 5 stars, really really enjoyed it. If you just want something fun to read I would read it, if you want something feminist to read I would read it. Yeah I would definitely recommend everyone pick up this book because it was brilliant. The next book I read was a very hyped book on um, booktube at the moment and that was The Bells by Danielle Clayton. This is a YA fantasy book and it's basically set in this world where everyone is born with grey skin, straw like hair and red eyes so they are born pretty unattractive um, and the only people who are born kind of like naturally beautiful in a way um, are these kind of set of girls called the Bells and they also have these like magic powers where they can make other people beautiful um, and there is this girl that we are following called Cam Camellia and she is in like the new set of bells that are about to kind of go out into society and she wants to become the favourite which means she is the bell in the court, she is the bell serving the royal family who is giving them their beauty treatments and giving the royal court the beauty treatments, the courtesans, all those people the beauty treatments and she wants to be the favourite um, and basically the story kind of goes on and she starts to figure out that the court isn't as beautiful as like she thinks it might be, there's a lot of kind of bad things that are happening and um, there's a lot of questions about who the bells really are as well that she starts kind of trying to wonder what is going on, there's some like shady stuff going on um, and overall I did really really enjoy this, this is very very descriptive, very very flowery descriptions um, like it's a really original concept as well. I don't think I've read anything really close to it before. The closest I could think would probably be Glitter by April Lynn Pike, but more so because of like how elaborate the court was and how over the top everyone's fashion and makeup and stuff was and like the obsession with beauty and fashion um, and being the most beautiful, that kind of thing. Um, I really liked some of the questions it raised about people's obsession with beauty and the obsession with beauty trends and always wanting to be on top of beauty trends and like the almost dangerous, how dangerous some of these trends can be and how people are so desperate to be acknowledged for their beauty that they would like go to these extremes and um, like those were like really really interesting I really really liked that some like relationships in this that I didn't really enjoy and um, I felt like some of them were like slightly forced a little bit in terms of like love relationships and um, I did really enjoy uh, Camellia's 
relationship with her sisters who are the other Bells and um, there's obviously quite a strong strong connection there um, and I just really liked the way that they were all there for each other most of the time and um, even when they were apart they were writing letters and keeping up with another, one another. So I gave this a four out of five stars overall and um, I enjoyed it. I will definitely be reading the next one. I would definitely say to people to give it a go. Um, I know it has been quite hyped so people might not want to pick it up right now um, but I would say like it's not the best fantasy book I've ever read but it's definitely like pretty strong. I would I definitely really really enjoyed it and once I got into the story I flew through through it as well so it, it is quite a quick and easy read as well. The book I finished this week was Miss Jane by Brad Watson um, and this is kind of a historical fiction book and um, more like literary fiction really um, and it is about a girl born in the early 1900s and um, her name is Jane obviously and she is born with this kind of physical I wouldn't say like this just this physical almost like deformity in a way where I think it's like she's missing kind of the sphinct sphincter muscle um in her genitalia so she basically has no control over when she goes to the toilet she's no control over her toilet habits um so she basically has to wear like a nappy all the time um or a diaper if you're in the US um and she has to like live her whole life like she's born like I think it's like 1915 so it's obviously there's no really treatment for her there's no operation she can take um, and I do think that the character of Jane is was inspired by like an aunt or a great aunt of the author I think that's what it is um but this was just a really beautiful like it's pretty short it's like about 280 pages um so it actually looks shorter than it is but it's actually quite a fast read I read the majority of this last night um and I really really enjoyed it it's very kind of soft and lovely and for the most part for the most part it's really lovely um and it's quite soft and quiet a read um and it's really just about this girl who was born with this unfortunate deformity but she doesn't really let it stop her I mean she goes out and she lives her life she works on the farm with her with her parents she works with her sister now and again um like she she's not going out and trying to do extraordinary things with her life she's just living her life like enjoying going to the cafe and having something to eat and enjoying you know becoming friends with different people and you know she also has to deal with kind of the grief of some things she can't do like she probably like she's kind of told early on that she can't really she'll it's very unlikely that she'd be able to have proper sexual intercourse with a man or be able to conceive a baby or at least um but be pregnant with a child for full term like she'd probably lose a child if she did become pregnant with one and um so she's dealing with all of that in her life as well but she's very kind of almost a solitary figure but I felt like she was quite a strong figure as well and I really like that as like just this this solitary woman who was for the most part happy and calm and she could do things on her own and she I just really I just there was something about that that I really really liked um she had a really nice friendship with the doctor in this the doctor who like delivered her and who kind of worked with her for the first few years um in terms of her deformity she they they just this they had this really lovely friendship it was almost like um father daughter in a way even though she does have a really great father in this as well but um their their relationship was very much like father and daughter and the way he spoke to her even from the time she's very young he spoke to her very honestly and very candid about about her condition and about kind of the do's and don'ts and her limitations and um I really really enjoyed that I thought that was really really refreshing um, and there's also some mentions of like um menstruation and masturbation in this as well and her kind of she kind of gets almost like an obsession with trying to see what other women looked like down there to see what she was different and she kind of spied a little bit but on her um, sister and her mother and it wasn't in like a creepy way or like a perverted way it was more of just that kind of childish curiosity is to you know like I don't know it kind of sounds a bit weird but it wasn't in like a bad way but I just really enjoyed that, that was put in there because I feel like that would be very very natural for a child growing up knowing all these things about why she was different I felt like it'd be very natural for her to want to go and see what someone who wasn't different looked like um so I really like that um and the masturbation and the menstruation it isn't mentioned in, time, in terms of like a representation way it's more in terms of just like biologically in terms of her experiences and stuff um but I still like that they were mentioned um and that they were part of the story so yeah overall I just really really enjoyed this it was just a really lovely read um I would definitely recommend it for someone who just wants something kind of 
quieter to pick up um, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars really enjoyed it everything I've read this week please let me know what you guys think down below I would love to know all your thoughts as always so I'll see you guys again next time bye